Hello there. If you are a middle school math teacher struggling to teach your students how to add integers, keep on watching where I'm going to show you my exact strategies on how to teach adding integers virtually in the distance learning classroom. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership. We are your one-stop shop for everything you need to teach middle school math. Today, I'm going to share with you my exact strategies and resources on how to teach adding integers virtually. If you would like to grab any of these resources that I'm about to share with you in this video, click the link below in the description where you can join us for our free four part mini series on how to teach adding and subtracting integers. The four part mini series is completely free and I, when you sign up, I will be sending you everything that you need via your email, where you will get access to videos just like this and resources just like this, all about how to teach adding and subtracting integers virtually. So let's get started in how I teach adding integers virtually so that it's easy, effortless, and painless. Keep on watching, here we go. Okay, so how do I teach adding integers, especially in the virtual setting? It is so difficult. The most effective way that I have done this is really using hands-on physical manipulatives. When I was te teaching face-to-face -face in the classroom, I would just simply cut up different, two different colored um, construction paper, label one color positive, one color negative. But since we we're, we're not, at least I'm not, um, teaching face-to-face, -face, I had to find a different way. So my answer and my solution to this is using digital chips. Let me show you exactly what this looks like. Okay, so if I was using counting chips, I would show my students, I had the answers up, that's bad. <laughs> um, I would show my students negative four plus one. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out four negatives, four negative chips, plus one positive chip. And I would show my students that a negative and a positive zero out. So if these zero out, what do you have left? Negative three. Exactly. Okay. So in this example, I have five positives. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to add two negatives. So I'm going to pull out two of my red dots. Do any of these zero out? Yes, they do. So these zero out, and what do you have left? One, two, three. Three positives. Perfect. Okay. Next, I have three positives. One, two, and three, and one negative. Do any of these zero out? Yes, right here. So what do you have left? One, two. Two positives. So the answer is two. Okay. In our next example, I have two negatives and one positive. Do any of these zero out? No. So what do I have? I have three negatives. Okay, what do you start? So then I will pose this question. What do you start to notice? At this point, my students already understand the concept of absolute value. So they understand that if you have the absolute value of an integer, that integer comes out positive. So we will talk about that very quickly, just as a reminder. And I'm going to, again, do more examples. So I have five negatives here. One, two, three, four, five, plus two positives. Okay, so these zero out, and what do I have left? Three negatives. Okay, so what do I begin to notice? If I have a negative and a positive, it's almost like, how do I go from five to two? and get three. It's almost like I'm subtracting, right? And it looks like I'm going to end up with, my answer is going to end up with the same sign as the number with the higher absolute value. So if I look at negative five, the absolute value is five. If I look at positive two, the absolute value is positive two. Five is bigger than two. Since five is negative, my answer is negative. Is that true? in all examples. So let's test this one. I have six negatives. 
five and six and one positive. So these zero out. Again, six minus one is five. And the absolute value of six is bigger than the absolute value of one and six is negative. So my answer is gonna be negative. And that does indeed ring true. Okay, so let's test this one. I have two positives plus three, whoops, plus three negatives. There's my two positives and these are my three negatives. So again, these zero out and what do I have left? I have one negative here. And yeah, the absolute value of three is bigger than two. And my since three is negative, my answer is gonna be negative. Okay, so it looks like I'm subtracting here when the signs are different and I'm taking the symbol of the bigger absolute value. What happens when you add integers with the same sign? Let's see, okay, I have two, so I have two negatives and three positives. Okay, so again, these are all red. So it looks like I'm ending up with five negatives. How do I go from two to three? Hmm, looks like I add them and I just keep the negative symbol, right? That's what it looks like. Let's test this one. I got a one and then a five. Two, three, four, and a five. One plus five is six, and I end up with six negatives. So what I end up doing for my students is we talk about these patterns. We talk about um, the different rules, and I will have this anchor chart hanging up in my classroom. With it being the same sign, we're going to add and keep the sign. If they have different signs, we subtract, so we keep the sign of the greater absolute value, and then my answer is going to be exact. I have some examples down here. And what I also like doing is using an activity like this, this digital activity for them so that they can um, create, they can use their own digital chips if they want, or they can just simply use negatives and positives and then cancel things out and check the final answer. I also give my students a copy of these digital chips for them to use if they feel like they need it. I just, you know, some kids feel it, find it useful. Um, I think it's definitely useful in the beginning for them. So I just wanna be able to give them access to it. If you are interested in downloading our digital chips, our extended activity, or our anchor charts, don't forget you could sign up for our four part mini series. It's totally free all about how to teach adding subtracting integers in the virtual classroom. I hope that you found this video helpful, and I hope that you can take this strategy directly into your classroom to make adding integers easy, effortless, and painless. And as I mentioned, if you would like to join us for our free four part mini series on how to teach adding subtracting integers in your virtual classroom, where you can download all the activities that I've shown here, click the link below in the description and you can sign up right now. Can't wait to see you inside our mini series. Until next time, bye.